Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We're back to clinical cases. I know we've had a brief distraction from all the other things, but this is how this patient presented to me. Does anyone know what the heck is inside there? <laughs> Comment below right now. I'll answer here in just a little bit. But this is a case where the general dentist had started it, had some difficulties, and sent it to me. This is from an office where I normally work with another dentist there, and he sends a bunch of cases to me. He was out because he had a surgery, and so he has a short-term fill-in, and this is what they sent. So I was a little confused as to what's going on. And that's always the question that I get from the really thoughtful general dentist is, how can we make your life easier as a specialist? And really, my job is to make general dentist lives easier and to take care of patients. So I will handle whatever you throw at me. But we can talk about a few of the things that the dentist did that were good, bad, in between, and kind of where I think we could have improved upon and maybe things that I could have improved upon as well. So first thing is, please don't use a cotton pellet. They're terrible. Use a sponge. You're going to have it Anyway, when you're using files, uh, I've been harping on this one for a long time. <laughs> but if you're still out there using cotton pellets, they're terrible to remove. And it's so much easier to use a sponge. Uh, that color right there should give away what the material is that was inside there. That plus how radio opaque it was. They used Vitapex as their temporary medication instead of calcium hydroxide. Now, the fact that they put it down into the canals like that is amazing. Oftentimes I see when general dentists have started cases that they don't put anything inside there. That would be one thing to not do. <laughs> the If you leave these canals empty, oftentimes the infection is way, way, way worse when they get back inside there. So even taking some calcium hydroxide, squirting it just even on top of the canals is going to help make sure there's no bacteria present inside there, which makes a significant difference. It looks like they had maybe taken a couple files down the canal. I'm not sure. If you look back at that pre-op, it looks like they maybe had gone slightly down or maybe the Vitapex just injected inside there. I'm not sure. But you can see the tooth is still vital. Thankfully, this patient wasn't in pain, which is great. And we were able to get, take care of the tooth without really any complications whatsoever. We're going to use Triton to rinse everything out like normal here. One thing I will say with Vitapex, I'm not beggars can't be choosers, and I'm just happy they put something inside there. I wouldn't recommend using Vitapex on a day-to-day -day basis. It is a great material. I have it. I love it. I use it in certain circumstances. However, there's couple main problems with it. Number one, there are some patients, especially those who are older, who tend to have iodine allergies. That is because back in the 50s and 60s, it was very common to scrub any wound that you have with betadine. And topical application of an irritant like that over and over can lead to developing an allergy. That's why we don't tend to use latex gloves anymore for a very similar you know, situation there. So there is a slight allergic component to it. The other thing is it's really difficult to remove. You can't really get it all out. The calcium hydroxide is pretty decent to remove. Vitapex is very difficult. And so you saw that one of the first things I did was take a 2006 inside there. I have found that that is a great way to pull out the rest of the Vitapex. Because if you go in there with a side vented needle and try to rinse it out, it's going to clog that needle almost immediately. So you have to go in with some mechanical cleaning first to get it out. Um, speaking of mechanical cleaning, you can see as we're slowly dropping down this MB2, normally I would use more of a pecking motion, but I could feel that the file was wanting to go around the curve. And really, I'm just going to let the tooth tell me what it wants to have happen. So in this case, I was able to get down quite a ways with that 1704 because there was almost a natural glide path there, even though I only took the eight down a little bit. So with MB2s, don't go in with the same approach every single time. Sometimes you can get away with uh, pecking motion. Sometimes it's just a low, slow application of force. It really just depends on what the tooth is giving you. So at this point, I'm going to open up the MB2 a little bit more using that 2006. Give me a little bit more space uh, just because oftentimes with MB2s, they're going to join. They're going to, you know, it, I like flaring before I get length because there's usually going to be some more discrepancies in the actual length itself. But here we are, and I think at this point we're almost at length. One take, baby. We're going to get this done. <laughs> so rinse this out here, and I think length is coming up after this. As far as the other things that they did, I do like that they did such a nice temporary restoration on top of here. You can see I'm leaving that IRM. That is not my favorite material, just because it's messy. 
However, with a vital case, IRM and that Eugenol does have the intended effect to really calm things down nicely. You can see I'm still removing Vitapex, and even in the final photos, you'll still see some yellow because you can never get that all out. So I do like the temporary that they used here. I think it's a good, it was well done. Cabot would be my preference, but if you're going to be doing a temporary on a vital case, I would recommend doing IRM over Cavett. Cavett will desiccate the tooth and can cause quite severe pain and sensitivity if you put Cavett directly on top of a vital pulp. So IRM probably was the better option here because they didn't do a full pulpectomy, just a pulpotomy. One other thing I would have recommended is removing the decay. So you'll see, especially at the end of the video, I do have to go back in and clean up a lot of the decay. Right now I'm leaving it because it's not a big deal. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be able to clean, it kind of keeps more of a chamber, so I don't have liquid going anywhere. That being said, if you've watched my two-part series on accesses, I'm really keen on removing all the decay first, because oftentimes that's going to get you your access. To me, this looks like the dentist did the pathways of the pulp axis on top of the tooth and ignored what the tooth was giving you. And that means probably more tooth structure was removed than necessary. So, you know, I'd love to hear any other endodontist sound off in the comments about how you would prefer your general dentist take care of these teeth as far as, oh, the patient's in pain, they need to see you. What's the best way to do that? For me, you know, I, I try to become, I'm try, we, we always have an emergency spot at the end of the day. We're very good at getting patients in over the lunch breaks, in between. So if they're local, I can easily get them in. Problem is this patient is two hours away. So a little bit harder for them to say, hey, <laughs> you know, I know you're in pain. Uh, let's pack up and send you down to Reno and get this taken care of. So I get it that there are some circumstances where you do have to do a pulpotomy. In general, I think this one was very well done. I'm just curious to see what other people think, because um, it's a question I get every now and then about, hey, how would you like me to handle this? I think it was handled well. I would have done a few different things, you know, slightly differently, but that's totally fine. We're all different, and that's what makes us all beautiful <laughs> in our own beautiful ways. But I'm always interested to see what other people have to think about these. Now, the rest of the case here is pretty straightforward. That is one thing I will say. I don't know what it is, but... Oftentimes, I think it's probably an over-reliance on hand files. I very regularly see ledges, short uh, kind of cleaning and other issues. If you are going to be doing a pulpotomy, I would recommend taking an 8 or a 10 down, you know, about halfway, and then taking a flaring file like the 2006 that I use and just removing that first coronal third of pulp tissue. That's enough that you can get space for the calcium hydroxide to get inside there or whatever else material you're going to use that you don't have to worry about the patient being in pain. And that way you're not going to, you know, necessarily ledge or cause any other issues. I can handle it. We, we I go past ledges and blockages all the time. That's part of what I do as a specialist, but if you want to know, if you're a general dentist watching, that would be how I would perform the pulpotomy, or I guess kind of pulpectomy at that point. <laughs> There's not really any use to me for barbed brooches. I don't think they're that useful in these cases. If you're great with them, and I know a lot of dentists who were trained back in the 60s and 70s are great with them, use them. It's not going to cause an issue for me. But as far as how I would do it, that would be probably my approach. And then I would use calcium hydroxide instead of Vitapex. If you look, you can still see a little bit of yellow granules <laughs> up and down here. And that's because this stuff just never comes out. It's so annoying. <laughs> um, You've seen some pretty good chunks come out of this tooth as well. The rest of it is really straightforward. We're going to dry it. We'll do the squirt fill on this one. I got the lengths off of the comb beam as well as the working length, the apex locator there. And it's pretty straightforward from here on out, thankfully. The dentist did request no restore. This is one that I don't generally restore for. That being said, I do still think as a specialist, our job is to make other people's lives easy. So one of the things you can see the decay there on the buckle, I will be taking that out. Um, there's still some hidden underneath there. There's the groove from the DL. So all of that will come out, but I like to wait because we have such a nice dry surface or area field field why am i saying surface area uh, because we have such a, that's the answer to everything in biology by the way surface area because we have a, a, such a nice dry field i'm going to finish the squirt technique get it all taken care of go back down recapitulate with the 20k file like you've seen before 
this tooth from the operation standpoint is very predictable. It really wasn't that infected, so I'm not worried about pushing anything out the end. Um, yeah, it, it's pretty straightforward here. I do have to do a little bit of hand work just where the two MBs come together, and that's that's common as well. And yeah, we're gonna do the technique. I know there have been some questions about the squirt technique. If you have any specific ones below, drop them below, but to just kind of go over everything, I use the BNL Beta Mini. You can use the regular one. The Mini, I believe, has a much better battery in it, so it heats up faster. And for a lot of people with smaller hands, they find it more comfortable. I use the 25 gauge multiple bending needle as far as the what uh, deposits it, and those work great. Um, a commenter a while ago talked about breaking the needles, and yes, the old ones break all the time. You do have to make sure your team doesn't accidentally set it down on top of it because that will still do it. And you want to make sure that if you're doing any bends or adjustments to use the little chuck that they, it comes with the unit, because if you do it right with your hands, you're more than likely going to crimp the metal. And that means that you're not going to have the same flow rate, which can then cause more strain and then eventually breakage as well. That being said, we still break these pretty often but I would recommend spending the extra on the multi-bending needle. I went from breaking one a week to one a month, and it's a couple dollars more per needle, which to me, the durability is 100% worth the increase in cost. I'm using the BNL Soft Gutta Percha. I'm not sponsored by BNL. I just like all their products, and I've been using them for so long, I know exactly how it responds. I wouldn't use a hard gutta percha at all for any of the squirt technique. You need it to flow, and I do heat this all the way to 230. I'm using, once again, BNL. I'm not sponsored, but if they want to sponsor me. <laughs> if you're at the AAE and I brought you over to the BNL booth, take a shout out in the comments below. They were very confused why I kept bringing people over, but hopefully they, they sold some of their products because I do like it very much. This plugger is great. It's the 3570. The one side is a 35 nickel titanium, so it's nice and flexible, which is great for these curved canals. And on the other side, it is a 70, which is great to make a nice, smooth gutta percha transition. Now, I am, I do want to make a 30. I think, I think the smaller sizes that I'm going to would be just so much easier to obturate with a smaller one here, but no one makes a 30 that I found yet. So if you know of one, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to probably start talking with a couple different companies to make one because I feel like there's enough people out there who would use it. We're now removing everything. I know it looks aggressive to be using an eight in that groove, but I could see on the side that there was a large amount of decay. So I don't want to have to switch burrs multiple times if I know that it's all going to go anyway. There was a lot of unsupported enamel underneath there. So I'm going to go through with the eight round burr and just remove as much of the decay as possible. You see there is still yellow coming up because Vitapex is like glitter. It will go everywhere. <laughs> and you, you want to you know get as much of it out as possible, but you will never get all the Vitapex out. It's another reason I don't really use it too, too much. One of the things I'm doing here, you, know, you can see why I didn't remove everything initially, because now we start to expose some areas where there could be some leakage or either of the... Um, either of the Triton or saliva in. Um, but I think it's nice for the general dentist. We have the microscope. Everything's nice and dry. This did not take long to do. This is one of those no cuts. So, I mean, the whole thing is what, we're 11, 12, 13 minutes in right now. It, it's not that long of a case. So spend an extra few minutes, make their lives easier, clean out all the decay, and be known as the person who doesn't leave decay. If you remember my last video on accesses, that's one of the major complaints that general dentists have about endodontists is, why do you leave so much decay? They come back and all of a sudden the tooth's not restorable because they never cleaned it out. Patient waited two months or whatever, and now the decay has destroyed the tooth. So clean it out, make your general dentist lives easier, and you'll definitely get more referrals that way. <laughs> it does not take long to take a big round burr and zip this out. You'll see I'm switching to the workhorse here for a couple of them just because I don't, A, the angle's kind of weird, and B, I don't remove that much tooth structure. But at this point, we really just have to temporize, make sure everything's clean. I do have to get the rest of that IRM out of there, which is going to be real fun because I think this one bleeds quite a little bit, <laughs> quite a little bit. This is great. This has been a long day. I, I have, I'm leaving for Chicago tomorrow. I have to do all sorts of fun things. Uh, if I see any of you in Chicago, say hi, but this is coming out the Monday after. So um, yeah, it's a, 
pretty straightforward case here. I thought it would be interesting just to go over, uh, okay, someone else started it. Here are my thoughts. What could be better? What do they do? Great. All in all, I think the dentist did a really nice job with this one. I'm really interested to hear what all of you guys think as well. So we're going to finish up here. There's the pic final pictures looking pretty as far as the MB2. Everything's cleaned out there. And then here's the final image with the cavity in there. You can see really straightforward case. Thank you all so much for watching. Please drop any comments, questions you have below, and I will talk to you all next time.